is hemoglobin 17 too high? My doctor halved my weekly dosage because of it. No, no. Too high based on what, right? Who, who says what's too high? But no, my local uh, hematologist, when I was in uh, Paris doing urology, he didn't even blink, you know, because he got people sent to him all the time from other providers for secondary erythrocytosis. And we so we'd talk every now and then about it and joke. And he's like, he didn't even blink unless their hemoglobin was over 20 at all. And that's rare, honestly, for it to be. Mine ran about 18 when I was on injections. So no, this and this this nonsense of just reducing your dose, like that's going to suddenly magically fix the hematocrit. It doesn't. It's still going to be high, higher than normal. Almost all these things are going to be outside of the normal range when you're taking testosterone. That's the other thing I'm kind of blown away that providers especially don't grasp. It's like they're okay with the testosterone. Some of them are okay with testosterone being higher than normal. But then anything else, no, we can't. Oh, oh, your prolactin's two points above normal. Well, no kidding. You're taking testosterone exogenously. Oh, your estradiol's 60 or 80 or whatever. Yeah, you don't need to be testing it. But of course it's out of normal. Those normal ranges weren't made or validated with people taking hormones. Those were baseline levels. And, and that is just something that I don't know why that's so hard to grasp. We should all understand that. Providers especially should understand how lab ranges were formed and made. And then all bets are off once you're taking an, the exogenous substance. Sure. And this idea that there's this ideal or optimal number within that baseline range has no bearing on reality when you're taking a substance at all.